Hi everybody, I'm Eva Esteban. Hi everybody, I'm Connor Usumano. In this video, we're going to walk you through how to use Galia with the OpenBCI software. Once you start the OpenBCI GUI, you will be able to see different widgets. The first one you'll see on the top right is the signal quality widget. This widget shows you where the different channels are located on the face. If you go to mode on the top right and change it into impedance mode, you can run a check across all channels and check the impedance value for each of them, which will give you an indication of whether they're making contact correctly on your face. So right now we're going through the channels so far so good. If you see any red channels, move the headset on your head a little bit and adjust it until it turns green or yellow. Great. And this, this test is only uh, valid for channels one through eight, which are passive channels. Channels nine through 16 are active. Okay, so all the channels right now look good. We can move on to check some of the data. So on the bottom right, you can see the Galia Auxiliary widget. This widget shows the heart rate and the EDA. So the first two lines show Connor's heart rate. It looks very clear. And in the bottom, we can see his EDA. So right now the EDA is stable and Connor, can you please pinch yourself? All right, I'm pinching myself. So as you can see, the EDA goes up, which is expected. And when he stops pinching himself, it goes down again. Ooh, there I pinched myself, got myself good. There's a bit of a delay. Ooh. You can see, there we go. Nice little spike there, try again. Pitch myself in a different place. Surprise myself. <laughs> All right. Now you can see this is the AD EDA. Great. So we can see that it changes. Um, and on the top of this widget, you can also keep track of the battery of your device. On the left, you can see the time series widget, which shows the raw data for, for the 16 channels. Channels one through four are EMG data. Channels five and six are EOG. Channels seven and eight are passive EEG. And channels nine through 16 are active EEG. We will start with a demonstration of the EMG data. Can you please open the EMG channels? Thank you. And the EMG widget. So the EMG widget shows you a normalized version of the data and it offers different parameters that you can fine tune, such as the smoothness or the minimum and maximum UV limits that you wanna use. So channels one and two are located on Connor's cheeks. Channel one is the left cheek and channel two is the right cheek. Channel three and four are on top of his eyebrows, three being the left and four being the right. So now Connor is gonna demonstrate how to uh, trick how to use uh, his eyebrows and cheeks to trigger the data in these channels. And so you know that I'm not cheating. I'm going to put the controller down now. Oh, I just turned off my GUI. There we go. I can hold the controller. Okay, so he doesn't have a controller anymore. Can you smirk left and then smirk right? So that will be channel one and channel two. We can clearly see the spikes both in the time series widget and in the EMG widget. Now, can you move your left eyebrow and then your right eyebrow? That's left, right. And you can see in channel three and four, both in the time series and in the widget. All right, let's play the mini game now. See how good I am at doing it randomly. So I'm gonna tell him uh, a number and he has to trigger that channel. So let's do two, four, yeah, three. Oop, wrong one, sorry. One, two, four, one, two, one, 
four, three. Ooh. So it takes a bit of practice, but as you can see, he can move the different muscles on his face to make the channels go up to a value of one. All right, let's do it again, but faster. Okay. One, three, two, four, one. Oops, sorry. Three, one, two, four, three. I'm, it's hard to do three versus four. Two. One. Okay. Not bad. That was not bad. All right, cool. Cool. Uh, so one more thing that we can see in the EMG data is if you ch clench your jaw, you can see the jaw clench across all channels. Obviously, it's more clear in one and two. Um, and this also propagates to the rest of the headset. So there we can see it across all the channels. Great. So next we're gonna show you um, some EOG data. For that, can you open just the EOG channels, please? Cool. And, I'll and turn off the filters. I'm gonna turn off the filters. So you can go to filters and then Turn them off for all the channels. And okay, great. So channel five is vertical EOG, which you can see in the signal quality widget. It's above and below um, his left eye. And channel six is horizontal EOG across his face. Yeah. So five here you can see is the vertical EOG channel and six is the horizontal. Great. Great. So can you move your eyes up, down, up, down, up, down? If you look at channel five in the time series widget, you can clearly see when he looks up and when he looks down. Now, if you look left, right, left, right, we'll be able to see the same in channel six. There it is. And now let's do a combination. So look to the upper right and then the lower left, upper right, lower left, upper right, lower left. And you can see very clearly in channels five and six the movement that he's doing. And now if you stop and do lower right, upper left, so basically the opposite, we can see that reflected on the data as well. Okay, great. I'm going to turn the filters back on. So the filters are back and we're going to demonstrate EEG data now. All right, I'm going to turn on the band power widget. You can see here, and we've got the FFT live, and then I'm going to turn off the EOG channels, and we should be good to go. So, first of all, using passive EEG, um, which is located on the forehead on top of his eyes, we can see blinks very clearly. So, if you blink in blocks of five, for example, you can see Connor's blinks, especially in channel seven and eight, but you can also see them in 9 and 10 because those are located towards the front of the head. Yeah, those look really good. And if you look at the FFT on the top right, you can get an idea of the noise floor. So we've set it to be a maximum amplitude on the widget of 10 UV, and you can see all the channels are below two. So the noise floor is really good. Yeah, really the noise floor is floating at or below one. And then here you're starting to see the signal and the noise creep above the noise floor. Great. So we're going to demonstrate some alpha waves. For this, we will use channels nine 
through 16. So right now, Connor has his eyes open and there's no predominant alpha. Can you close your eyes now, please? And as he closes his eyes, you can see an alpha peak start to emerge, both in the band power widget and in the FFT plot. So it goes up until like 7 UV, and it's around 11 Hertz. This frequency will change in the band of 8 to 13 Hertz, depending on the person. And if you look at the time series we did, you can also see the waves that are going at that frequency clearly. Can you open your eyes now? And as he opens his eyes, you can see that the alpha peak goes down. Now let's close your eyes again. and we can see the alpha power band coming back up. Great. You can open your eyes now. So that's the demonstration of how to see alpha waves using the EEG channels. If you want to export any of these data types, you can use the networking widget. So Connor's going to open it now. The networking widget allows you to use different protocols such as serial, LSL, UDP, and OSC. For example, if you're using UDP, you can export up to three streams and you just have to say which data type you want to export. Keep the widget for that data type open and then press on start UDP stream. Once you do that, it'll open a UDP socket and you will be able to catch this stream using a different application such as Unity. Another useful widget is the packet loss widget. So in there, you can see some stats about your session. And right now looking at it, we can see that we haven't lost any packets since we started the session, which has been 15 minutes long so far. So that's great. All right. And I believe, you know, other than showing off some of the other widgets, that that is the end of the Galia GUI tutorial.